Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lucky Dog Podcast. This is your host, Elias Roush. This podcast is sponsored by EliasRoushMedia.com, photo, video, digital media production. Today we are discussing Money Heist, Part 4, Season, sorry, Season 4, Part 4, Episode 2. Sorry, I, the damn parts are always getting me fucked up, so, yeah, 4-2. Uh, Overall, I'm glad we're back on track. I do feel like the second episode is when the ball starts to really get rolling. I feel like this is one of those seasons, um, or not just seasons, it's one of those shows that definitely require multiple episodes to get it going because I felt like some of the best stuff happened actually uh, actually in this episode of this beginning of the fourth part. So, um, let me bring up the uh, synopsis real quick. Palermo shocks the group with his actions. Sierra pressures her subject to take a deal. The professor remembers his brother's wedding. It's definitely a flashback-heavy episode. Once again, um, learning a lot about um, who the team was before all of this went down. Um, specifically, um, when they're playing ball, when they're at these weddings, when they first met up. So here are a couple notes that I wrote down from this uh, second episode. I liked the flashback of everyone playing ball. It really brings the rapport back. It seems like not only do the characters look like they're having fun, but it looks like the actors actually look like they're having fun. These actors seem to click together pretty well. Um, Helsinki, a little aggressive in this, slapping people around, but, you know, grabbing grabbing ass and whatnot. Um Let's see. All right. So, uh, continuing on in this uh, episode, I liked the touch of detail that uh, Lisbon's bike was at the farm. There's a, a shot of the professor and Marcel, uh, you know, getting ready to ride off on these motorcycles in this farm, and uh, yeah, it's it it's pretty uh, smart that they put it there, and they just didn't have two motorcycles chilling there as opposed to I think it's three. Um, so there's another scene with, uh, one lady that is helping Arturo and I, this is one of those scenes that I thought was a little bit contrived with the, uh, the characters wanting someone to latch on to Arturo clearly wanting to get, uh, a leg up. He wants to kind of infiltrate the group a little bit and he's going to do it by kind of starting a a small relationship with this lady. So he's going to have someone on his side and, um, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think she had to get, you know, all topless and everything, you know, regardless of your opinion. I just was like, what is going on? They just have to make it sexy for no reason. I I guess. I don't know. She, she had blood like on her chest and she's just like wiping it up. So the natural reaction is take her entire shirt off. I don't know. Um, maybe she, maybe she wanted someone to, uh, to hold her. Cause she did seem like she was kind of, you know, skittish in a way. And I don't recall this lady in the last episode, but she might've been, uh, let's see. There's a scene of Palermo kind of getting all suited up, ready, taking off the eye patch. The eye patch had to have been annoying as hell uh, to to act with, just to have something covering your face uh, for long periods of time. It's, it's just complete. It's distracting as an actor, so I'm sure they wanted to get that uh, mask off of him, even though it was a really cool, striking visual. Um, so Palermo can still use both of his eyes. He's not blinded. He just has some facial scarring and whatnot, and he's trying to. Uh, leave at this. Oh, and I, I think I said it, it was a coup d'etat. It's uh, when you're trying to, um, you know, kind of stage a rally against, like, the leader and kind of take over. That's what I meant to say on the last episode. I think I kind of fucked up the uh, the verbiage, and I might have done it again, but at least we know what it's, it's about. So, um, let's see. Palermo's, like, trying to leave, planting claymores, and he says he has some, like, government knowledge or some secrets in the briefcase. I'm not sure if I believe that worth a damn, but uh, regardless, uh, what is it, Tokyo and Rio and uh, Helsinki are all there just to um, 
kind of bring him back into I don't think it's the mint. I think are they robbing? I don't remember exactly what they're robbing. A, a museum or a mint, or I, I, part three. I'm pretty sure they're robbing a mint. But let me uh, let me confirm that. I should have looked this up before. Let me see real good. So the dun 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 dun. dun. I don't know where the I'm going to probably have to look this up and or throw it in the next uh, episode because I do not have the exact place that they are. Okay, so the professor recruits Martin to put his brother's plan into action, target the Bank of Spain. First step total chaos. That was see that was part 3 episode 2. So, yeah, it is I think it is the Bank of Spain and that's still the same robberies uh going on in here. And so um, yeah, sorry I had to do a little bit of backtracking on that, but at least we know, I believe it is Bank of Spain. Um, what else do we have going on in this episode? For the notes, let's see. Um, yeah, so they was, uh, Palermo was trying to plant claymores, and Helsinki was picking them up, and I, the thing about these characters is they're such likable characters, I don't think anybody is really going to get taken out until the very end. I don't even think they're, we're going to lose uh, Nairobi at this point. Nairobi uh, is already getting good news from Tokyo and stuff. Um, if she were to pass after all this is happening, all of the surgery and all of this, um, then I'd be surprised. But, um, yeah, so let me see. Why is Monica and Denver having a secondary breakup? Did they not break up in the first episode? Monica was like, I'm done with this. I can't do this. And then she has another conversation with him in this episode as if they just didn't break up the previous episode. Are these writers not talking to each other? This is, it's, it's got to be the same writers, right? Um, um, I, I don't know. It's actually not showing the writers, but yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it's the same writers, uh, but it's the same. Let me see. Javier Quintes on episode two, and episode one was Colta Sierra. Um, yeah, I assume that these are written by the same people. Um, I don't know why that they basically had a secondary breakup. Monica basically says, I can't do this again. Um, and <laughs> Denver has a horrible, a horrible metaphor for talking about women, comparing them to cars and shit like that. I was like, Dude, you have got to be kidding me. I cannot believe you said that. Um, and you're already in the doghouse. You, why would you do that again? Um, I don't know. Uh, let me see. Okay, so when Tokyo is having a conversation with the professor, it has this like mic drop beat, let the beat drop moment of the professor realizing that the government might not have killed Lisbon. It was like dance. It was like fucking like drop it, drop the bass, drop the beat. Let's get it. I was like, this is why I like the show. This is what I came for. I needed that. I think I needed that scene in the first episode uh, so that we can kind of get this uh, show on the road because it kind of felt like the pacing and the momentum in the first episode was a little bit dragging in a little bit. And so once that moment happened, it it feels like it set things into motion of, okay, now we have a plan. Now we have a plan of action. Now we can go uh, you know, find Lesbian. Where is she being questioned? That type of thing. I was like, you know, this is what I came for. This is this is what I'm talking about. So uh, I, I love the... Uh, the idea that Tokyo is the one that brings it to the professor's uh, attention that they kind of did the same the same thing they did with Rio, um, so that 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 was really hype. Um, it was it was the the thing that was coming to my mind was the Inception womp. Like I was like she, <laughs> I was like this is another one. Um, okay, so and then all of a sudden Marcellus just decides that he can't go against the plan, the plan that the professor decided to create. What the fuck? This Jamie Lannister half-baked ass decides to start having a fist fight with the professor right there while the uh, while Lisbon's being interviewed and questioned and threatened by the police um, and against uh, authority rule. 
and they don't have like the proper, you know, police codes filled out for it and whatnot. And so, um, you know, there's this, you know, comparison. I would thought that scene of Marcel deciding to go against them, uh, and then, you know, them having just a fist fight out in the middle of nowhere for absolutely no reason did not make sense to me. I did not. Why would you go against the plan then? And it's not like he told you never to go against the plan. And if you go against the plan, if I try to do something to, you know, destroy the plan or go against it, then take me out. That's what the fuck is that? I mean, we've seen movies like that and it's kind of ridiculous. You know, the guy that can't allow his master to, you know, complete the plan that the master originally created, but they have to change the plan. So, uh, you know, the guy's just too stuck on the first plan. So he has to take the master out. It's like, what? You can't just adjust. You have to have a fist fight about it. I was, uh, I, I'm done. You know, it's, I was just like, this is a waste of time. Um, so I, I was like, whatever. Um, cut 20 minutes out of it or just give Raquel and the detective way more time. I, I don't, I don't understand why they needed to do that. Um, I don't know. Pointless sparring match. That's, that's what I just wrote down. Um, there is flashbacks, more flashbacks at this wedding. It's, it looks like they probably, uh, you know, shot all the flashbacks in the same day so they could have Berlin for like one day. And they were like, all right, we're going to have you at the, the wedding ceremony. And the only people that are going to be there are your main boys and nobody else. There's nobody at this wedding. I was like, okay, they got, they got money, but they ain't got no friends. Um, and I don't got no grandma talking like that. <laughs> uh, let's see. The interrogation of Raquel is, you know, pretty digging. Like when it comes down to her personal life, her, them trying to find her, her mother who has the, the memory dementia problems and uh, her daughter as well. I was like, mm, this is, you know, a sticky situation. You can you could definitely see how Raquel might, you know, flip the switch. Um, talking about her past abusive relationships and trying to expose her as a weak link. Like, I was like, oh my, Lanta. So we're going to get uh, Rock Hill's ex-husband back, abusive ex-husband that the professor already took out last, I don't remember if it was last season or two seasons ago, but regardless, uh, the professor got up on that ass, but apparently they're, they're just threatening the shit out of Rock Hill. It's going to be difficult um, to get her out. And the lead cop, I don't have his name in front of me, but... uh. He clearly has no problem working outside the law. Where the fuck is that guy? Um, his name's uh, Tamayo. Uh, Cornel Tamayo. I don't have the... Uh, oh, and Alicia. Alicia is the detective. Alicia Sierra is the detective that is interviewing Raquel. Okay, so uh, Alicia and Tamayo. Let's see. Yeah, and Tamayo has absolutely no problem working outside of the law. He's just, he seems like a, I like the actor and what he's giving, the 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 gravitas. He's just letting the words just, you know, ooze out of his mouth. He just doesn't give a sheet. <laughs> um, so, um, let's see. Hmm. I don't really understand uh, why Tokyo gets to be the narrator. I remember at the beginning of the first season, doesn't she get to be the narrator strictly because she is in a situation that it's it's her point of view and the the whole heist is from her point of view. But I don't understand why is the whole series kind of told under her umbrella, which I don't know. She they've got a good voice for her, the, the narrator, but I just feel like uh, the thing is. It's kind of unnecessary, you know. Just let the story unfold and show us. Um, but yeah, and and she's starting to say things we already know. Like the professor was already five steps ahead. You know, he couldn't be Superman, so he had to be Sherlock Holmes. It's like that's a good line, but we didn't exactly need that. <laughs> um, let's see. Are Monica and Rio gonna have some sort of? linking up or something like Monica has absolutely no problem going from uh these guy to guy of these uh you know heist 
relationships. I, I think Monica just needs to stay out of this and just go do her own thing. Like she was pulled into this because of the Alturo thing and Denver kind of being the the guy to save her in that first heist. But like she doesn't need to be part of all this. I I I, I don't think she's really su- suited for it. And I don't I don't everyone has like uh, a specialty and I don't recall what Monica's was like someone some people were grifters some people were thieves some people were the heavy hitters some people were the miners uh, but I don't remember what her specialty was I, I, I gotta go back and maybe see if she's contributing something that I, I can't remember um, but yeah there, there just seemed to be a little bit of drama uh, focusing on that and I think Denver would have absolutely no problem, you know, linking back up with Tokyo. I can't remember if they, they linked up. I think they did link up, um, back in the day. I I just don't remember if it was for a long period or, or, or I don't think they dated anything. They just hooked up. Um, yeah. So Palermo is trying to overthrow all of this being, he's, he's basically put down there with the, uh, the prisoners, the people that are, you know, tied up and whatnot. And he's te- trying to teach people how to dislocate their thumbs to get out of, uh, you know, handcuffs and whatnot. Um, this guy's going to fuck things up for everybody. I can't believe he's, he's actually doing this. Um, which makes me question his motivation. I don't really understand Palermo's motivation. Like, he's he's self-destructive in a way that I don't even know why you'd want him on your team. Like, he seems like he's... They say he's the only guy that can get the gold out, but it's like I don't know. He's it seems like he's the it seems like the one guy that's gonna get you caught too. So I'm gonna have to uh, start closing up shop real quick. Uh, these are some weird interpretations for Raquel to have to watch. Oh, with her, with uh, Alicia bringing out the car, bringing out her mother, bringing out little dolls and shit, and police ambulances and shit. She's like playing with toys in front of Raquel to, sh- to demonstrate how what they're gonna do to her, their grandmother, and her grand, her, her mother, and what they're gonna do to her family, and how they're gonna infiltrate. It's like, eh. it's like. We don't need all this. Just give me a nice script. Give me a nice script, and, and we're gonna and we're fine. So, kind of a rocky scene when it came to that. I just didn't didn't feel like it really added to much. It's like I already kind of get they got the upper hand. Um, let me see. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching, listening, Look at Dog podcast. Check us out. All the social medias down below in the corner or in the links in the description for additional. Money Heist Reviews or additional podcasts, please email thelugdollpodcast at gmail.com for all comments, questions, concerns. Um, five stars on iTunes, upvote, YouTube, subscribe, follow on Twitch. You know what to do. Thank you for supporting the Luck Doll Podcast, and take it easy.